So today I want to demo for Microsoft Syntex uh, bulk content assembly using the Power Automate action to automatically generate lots of documents. A little about me, uh, my name is Leon Armston. I'm a Microsoft 365 Solutions Consultant at IntelliJ in London in the United Kingdom. I recently was made an MVP, which was, yeah, uh, like such a nice uh, award uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah contributing more and yeah, that was a lovely recognition. Uh, you can find details below on how you can connect with me. I blog quite a lot about syntax uh, and tweets and LinkedIn and uh, GitHub. So today uh, what I want to do is, well, I want to give an intro to Microsoft syntax, but I can't cover it in 15 minutes. I couldn't cover it in an hour. Like there was so many Microsoft syntax announcements. So Microsoft syntax, formerly SharePoint syntax. There were so many announcements at Ignite uh, last week. It's becoming a really compelling product. Uh, then what I'm focusing today on is Microsoft syntax uh, content assembly. So document generation creating documents. I'll give you a demo and then give you some steps uh, to find out more. So what is Microsoft Syntax? So the vision for Microsoft Syntax is basically content AI. So using content to view your content. So your your documents, your images uh, and trying to make sense out of them. Uh, identify documents. Uh, identify the content that's in the documents and then make that discoverable to your users. So your users are not, uh, say, searching everywhere to try and find a document or that's going to help them uh, with your job. And there is some automation steps as well. So when it is discovered, um, yeah, we can do subsequent actions. That'll be what I touch upon uh, today. So just a brief slide so it's putting people at the center um, so this is a vision with with content seamlessly integrated into collaboration so most uh storage so say if you store all your files in sharepoint that's quite an expensive uh platform to store in comparison to i don't know as your blob storage so it's yeah as people are adding so i think there's some stat like 1.3 billion files a day are added to m365 um and that keeps on going every every day it, it's people's m365 tenants are getting um quite uh full so we want to turn that content from just a cost that yeah, it's just sitting there as is to an advantage to make people, uh, yeah, make people get value uh, from it. So, what does Syntax do? Microsoft's Syntax, there's a lot more uh, vectors to it now. Initially, it started by reading content. So, you'd create a model to say, pick out all the reports in a document library. It would only trigger on a report, uh, for example, but then it would. Uh, so once it's been, once the model has been triggered, you can then train the model to pick out subsequent fields. So say the report title or the date of the report or the author, and then those values are yeah tagged um, with say that report name uh, that. Um, the dates, uh, the author. So then that that's metadata fields attached to the document. So we can do search solutions or to filter by reports by an author, for example. And that model can be spread across all of your content in M365. So you can uh, say find the reports in your M365 tenant. So they might be over many different sites. And then, yeah, there is extra parts uh, now to syntax so there's robust analytics security retention so when a model is applied to a library you can apply sensitivity retention labels and now there is some extra parts of syntax so at ignite um yeah a 
oh, about a week or so ago. Um, there was lots of new announcements. Now I'm not going to go through the all of these uh, individually, but this this was the uh, roadmap that was released. So it's not just about. Uh, so if you see my mouse now, it's not just about. Uh, yeah, processing uh, documents now. There is content assembly generating documents. There's, there's a whole new managed tier with backup and archiving of SharePoint sites. And uh, there is a developer story in terms of a uh, data lake. So you can ingest uh, the information from your M365 tenant and do reporting over ex Exchange, so Outlook, uh, SharePoint. Uh, there's a whole lot of like, things, but yeah, that's a separate thing. There's e-signature, um, but yes, I'm not going to go through them. I'm going to focus on the next thing. So content uh, assembly. So as I mentioned, content assembly is document generation. So you may have used Microsoft Word uh, to generate documents. So you create a template and then you can populate it with, say, uh, address address letters to a different person. So yeah, it's very useful for standard repetitive business documents uh, such as generating contract statements of work, service agreements. Um, so to set one set a content assembly uh, template, you use an you can use an existing uh, document. So if you've already got a letter that that you often send out to people, you could create a uh, template, a modern template from that uh, and mark placeholders where like the name is, the first line of the address, for example, and book and generate uh, different uh, letters. You can link the placeholders to a SharePoint list. So you've maybe got a list of several people or you've got a third party system that's on a, a workflow or a power app that's uh, yeah, connecting to that SharePoint list to like populate the address fields, uh, for example. Or we can have this manual field. So the user, every time they create a document, they have to specify the name and type it all in. This is a uh, content assembly. Uh, this is how you would uh, populate a document. So we can see on the right hand side all the fields and these are mapping to these green placeholders here you can create pdf and word documents but now in preview there is a power automate action to generate uh, documents using sharepoint syntax uh, contents assembly so we can see in action here so it looks yeah quite quite familiar to, uh, if you're used to using say the SharePoint add item to SharePoint lists for example we select the site address the document library name and um, then which template we want to use there's some exciting stuff coming on the roadmap for content assembly so image placeholders uh, in documents so perhaps you want to create a document but you need a different logo uh, depending on what's been chosen there's been some improvements for placeholders and content assembly in tables. Uh, there's this uh, roadmap entry has not been closed yet, but you can create PDF documents from uh, templates now. And there's a few more new things that came with uh, content assembly in Ignite. So the ability to, from a SharePoint document library, merge uh, two documents uh, together or there's the ability to have placeholders. So say if a fee amount in a contract is say over 50,000 pounds, for example, it requests that a uh, the CEO field is added that uh, yeah we need approval from the CEO, for example. Some of the use cases that I've used content assembly for. Uh, so today I wanna talk about employee checklists. I've used it for creating contracts. So often you, people will send out the same contract but like replace the client uh, the um the date for example or the company um letters has been a useful one like sending 500 letters out to different uh, people statements reports and invoices so i now want to go to my demo 
I'll just briefly show you how we would do all this manually. So how we would create an employee checklist um, manually. So from within the SharePoint document library, so we've not got to say open word or anything like that. We just do it on um, a SharePoint document library. We select uh, the modern template that we've created. So here's one I created uh, just we've got the equipment commissioning checklist. We can see that this is quite a complicated form. There's lots of different uh, tables and checklists. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm creating this checklist for the engineer to go to site and they may have a clipboard uh, and they check off things and add comments about uh, commissioning or checking the status of a piece of equipment. So this template is linked to a SharePoint list. So I'm going to select an existing SharePoint list entry that I created previously. So good old Megan Bowen. So we can see that all these placeholders now have just changed uh, to the values of, of that SharePoint list. We can, we've got a manual field here, so the date of inspection. So I'm going to specify, um, I don't know, Halloween. So I can now create this document. I can specify a name, PMP demo, uh, and I can choose whether it's going to be a PDF or a uh, Word document. So I create the Word document, sorry, uh, PDF. And we can click into this. And we should be able to see that it's generated the document and it's got Megan Bowen as the chief inspector and yeah, filled out all these details. But for the engineer, uh, we want to we want to generate all the jobs that that engineer's got to do for the whole day. So we don't want to do that uh, one by one. We want to uh, yeah, do uh, bulk generation. So. We could have that. This is a SharePoint list, which is the uh, data repository for uh, the bulk creation. So this could say link from a CRM system that uh, um, the CRM system talks to SharePoint and it adds the entries for the engineer today. Uh, we don't need this uh, SharePoint list as an as a uh, interim measure. We could just go with say Power Automate. Uh, we could uh, link straight to the syntax action here. So I'm just going to add the syntax action here. So just do a search for the syntax. And if I talk, if I find my Microsoft syntax site and select the PMP demo site, um, and then I select my template, it should auto populate with all the fields, the placeholders uh, of my templates. So I'm not going to, uh, I can I can fill these in, but I don't want to slow the process down. So um, that is the Power Automate uh, action uh, in uh, for SharePoint Syntax content assembly. So what we could do now is uh, this is um, a Power Automate flow that uh, gets all of the items from the employee equipment inspection checklist. So this list here. And then uh, we, we're pre-populating all of those uh, placeholders that we created that are in the model. So we can see the manufacturer, the equipment ID, etc. So if we now test this, we manually start this Power Automate flow. Um, this shouldn't take too long to create. Uh, it's a couple of seconds per per document. So we can see that it's now yes, successfully completed for free documents. So if we now go to the bulk um, folder, 
we can see that a few seconds ago, um, yeah, the equipment checklist for a lampshade, a bed, a laptop uh, has has been created. And uh, because it's a workflow, these documents could be emailed uh, to the engineer. Uh, they they could be sent to a printer, a web enabled printer, for example. So yeah, all the engineer needs to do is uh, yeah, pick out what the printouts and then they can go to, to sites. Um, what uh, the equipment checklist also has is places for recommended actions, comments, uh, places for signatures. So what could happen like this is another part of syntax is what could happen is the engineer fills in their site visits for, for the equipment, puts all their notes in, and then we can get a document library, and then there could be a syntax model that then picks up, and syntax can read a uh, handwritten text, so uh, it could yeah pick out all the handwritten details, the checkboxes, uh, for example, and save someone having to type in all of those uh, details, and because then, the data has been extracted, it could perhaps talk back to the CRM or work management system with all the um, yeah the details of the equipment from the site visit. So yeah, that's that's bulk uh, content uh, assembly. I'll just return back to my to my slides and just finish. So I just want to give you a few more steps, find out more about syntax. Um, if you want to get going with Microsoft Syntax, uh, there is a free Microsoft 365 Syntax assessment tool, where it's a really cool, uh, cool tool. It will assess all of your sites and libraries uh, in your SharePoint environment and give you areas where, yes, Syntax could be of benefit. And there is some it will scan for finding, say, libraries where there are um, Word documents assigned to, say, the content type, because you create a content, you create a document from the content type and it comes with a template. So that might be a great example for where you could use content assembly. So you have a, a set document and then you can auto uh, generate the, the values rather than yeah, working on a document template from a content type. Uh, there's a SharePoint lookbook. If you want to get started with syntax, there is a, a syntax content center template, so you can have a play around with syntax with that, and you don't need a license to do anything in that site. Uh, there's a contracts management template with also in the lookbook, so that's a accelerator for syntax. So that shows you a scenario of yeah, receiving contracts, processing contracts, generating contracts. Uh, the few more links to find out more about uh, syntax and yeah, I, I also blog blog quite a bit about uh, syntax. Uh, if but yes, that's the end of my presentation today. Feel free to reach out if you've got any feedback or yeah, need any assistance with content assembly or any syntax queries but uh yeah that's uh me uh done uh thanks so much everyone awesome very very cool stuff leon it really allows us to take that redundant work and automate it uh in a very efficient way using the whole spectrum of the microsoft and power platform so thank you excellent work mm -hmm.